do live alone, but my cousin is on his way. Okay, here we go. We're going deep in those holes, bro. I don't care. That's this. Come on, that's this. Where you at? What is up everybody? It is your boy Sherman the Vermin back with a new video. You already know what time it is. We are back with another secrets you missed in our most viral videos. I'm sure you guys have missed this a bunch as I've been seeing in my comments. We are on episode four and I've been having an absolute blast making these. I've been waiting to share all these secrets with you guys and I think today we have the craziest episode yet. From unbelievable footage of us speaking to an actual spirit to long lost friendships. You guys already know how this goes, so without wasting any time, let's begin. So starting off with number one, we have my cousin Clint connecting with his passed away mother through one of my videos. This is easily the craziest thing that's happened to me in 2023. Now, this is a very sensitive topic. So I made sure with Clint that this was okay to talk about and okay to put on camera and he was completely fine with it and he actually liked it. So um, I'm gonna share that story with you guys. And we also have footage of it happening in the moment, crystal clear footage. So here we go. So quick backstory, when Clint was about 17 years old, I was five years old his mother unfortunately passed away due to an illness so when this happened it was extremely hard on clint and my dad since it was my dad's sister but also one person that it extremely affected was my mom my mom and clint's mom were extremely close and my mom really really respected her and clint's mom always treated me like a son she was always helping out the less fortunate donating clothes donating food to homeless shelters and always making sure that we were well fed taken care of happy and that's just something that i never forgot even as a, such a young kid i just never forgot that i didn't know the meaning of somebody passing away but my mom just kept telling me she's in a better place she's in a better place from that point on no Nobody really talked about it, especially since Clint was so young and that's so tragic. I'm sure it's all of our biggest fears um, to have that happen and it takes a certain amount of strength to push through that. So from that point on, we tried our best not to bring it up. Not because we wanted to forget, but because it was just such a sensitive topic. I've talked to Clint about his mother maybe three times in my life. That is how sensitive it is. Now, fast forward about 17 years later, which is crazy that it was almost exactly half of Clint's life that he gets to connect with her once again, which is just crazy. I'm doing a video with these paranormal experts and one of the paranormal investigators named Janine claimed that she was a medium. I'm just gonna be honest with you guys. I didn't believe in mediums. I always saw like TV shows on them and videos and I just never believed it. There's no real proof to it. Uh, there's a lot that could go into it. It's, it's not really cold, hard evidence, but what happened on this day was just unexplainable. I mean, it was almost impossible for somebody who is not in contact with the actual spirit to know any of this information that this medium knew. So I asked the question, is it common for a spirit to present itself in a way that a human can see it? And the medium looked at me and she said something along the lines of, yes, it is. There's two behind you right now that I could see. Can ghosts present themselves in a figure that humans can see? Yeah, they present it in many different forms. So I, I see ghosts just like I see you. Off topic, is there any around me right now? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you really wanna know? Yeah. <laughs> you have two. I have two. Two, a male and a female. The female is much older, the male is closer to your age. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit, oh, stop. Okay, back to the freaking video. I'm like, okay, it's kind of baloney. I don't really believe it and I'm not really gonna ask about it too much because I just don't believe it. She said there was a boy and a woman. Now, I had no idea who the boy was and I wasn't really giving too much conversation about it because again, I thought it was baloney, but then Clint said something. 
Mind you, I was not thinking about Clint's mother at the time. Maybe Clint was, but Clint said, what about the woman? And then she said this. What about the older woman? The older woman feels like she's like a, an aunt figure. Oh, f <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I knew it, I knew it. That's why I asked. Yeah. <laughs> what color hair? Darker. You good? No, oh, no, I, just, I felt that. That's why I was like, I knew it was gonna be that. You were very but, close, yeah. very close. That's his mom. It's your wow. mom? Wow. I mean, could okay, that just gave me confirmation goosebumps all over. Oh. <laughs> How did you? What the? F dude, that's crazy. <laughs> I, she said aunt, dude. Yeah. Where did I that come that from? answer was gonna come. That's why I asked. I was hoping that it that it yeah. wasn't. I know. Me too. <laughs> Damn. Hey, Clint. Hi. <laughs> love you, bro. I love you too. Absolutely crazy. Now, mind you, I had contacted Janine through a paranormal company in my city. She knew about the video one day before we filmed it. One day before she showed up to the shoot. She had no idea who I was. She had no idea what my YouTube channel was. All she knew was that she was coming to watch some paranormal videos and answer some questions. And when we introduced ourselves, I introduced myself as Anthony, a YouTuber, and Clint introduced himself as Clint, one of the camera operators. He did not say I'm Anthony's cousin, let alone that Clint's mom passed away. Now, let's imagine that this was just a lucky guess. Put yourself in a medium's shoes. Let's say you're trying to make people believe that you're a medium. Out of all the things you could say, like great great grandfather, or great great grandmother, or dog, or neighbor, or friend, or somebody you pass by on the street, out of everything, you mentioned something so specific as an aunt. I'm sure a lot of you out there know your aunts very well. Maybe you only have two aunts. Maybe you have no aunts. It's not really common for you to not know who your aunt is. I mean, maybe it is, but it's like a 80% chance that you know all your aunts. The accuracy in that guess alone and the risk to guess that if it was a guess is just phenomenal. So hold on. That's not all the proof we have. We have something way crazier that happened in this video. So we asked Janine if she could sit down with Clint after we had finished the video and just see if she could answer some questions or give Clint some more closure since of course the tragedy happened when he was very young. So let's just say if you still think she just got a lucky guess, watch this clip right here. Um, uh, I, I had a feeling when you said, right when you were sitting there and you said that there was a, a, an older woman spirit and a younger man, from the, the minute we walked in, I kind of had an idea that this older woman that you were saying could have been my mother, but I didn't want to, you know, Influence that, yeah. Influence that. And you, and you didn't even know he was my cousin. I didn't say, this no is my cousin, clue, right? Anthony. Yeah. I just said, hi, I'm Clint. I work with him. That's it there. So there yeah. was no indication that who's this aunt? Is it connected to that guy? It just, it had some sort of like, I don't know. I felt it. And, uh, you know, I, I always like appreciate moments where I can, you know, come closer and, you know, communicate in ways and stuff. But yeah. doing a Is she near him now? She's still here. She is. I think she's around you guys a lot. Yeah. Because I think she kind of, treated you like a son my too. mom is in love ask leslie even when clint's not there my mom tells leslie that oh, his mom was you know. the most amazing person she ever knew in her life and she 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 just wants you to know she's okay yeah yeah and she's not she's not going where she's still around oh, yeah so talk to her Thanks, you know yeah. she hears you and just pay attention to what pops into your head that's her responding to you it's so amazing the intent of coming in here not even i mean yes i knew you were a medium but i didn't even think about my mom but then right when you said that to him and it's so weird because anthony has a lot of my mom's spirit too uh very like em empath in that sense a giver but also like funny like my mom will yeah. like you know she'll mm -hmm. always like there was like just jokes that she always had she uh, always gave me cherries cherries oh, i'll never forget that ever since i was like five i'll go to her house she'll fill me up with cherries and then like, even when my mom would tell her no, she would just be like, no, come here, I'll give come me here. a couple of cherries, <laughs> a cup of cherries. It was just weird how my, my heart kind of like knew that that's who watches over Anthony. She watches over, because also my All brother you. baptized yeah. Anthony. Yeah, so yeah, me and uh, Anthony has like a close connection to our family. You know, my brother loves Anthony like his own brother and I love Anthony like my yeah. brother. So yeah, I feel like your mom thought of him as a son. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I feel yeah. like she's, Giving me like a nickname for somebody, but Baba or Baba? Baba? Baba. That's dad in our language. Okay. Yeah. That's what I'm hearing. So that's, that's maybe, maybe she, she wants to know that she's around as well. So. Yeah, he lo he he was the most effective. She's happy for that. Wait, yeah. She said good. Baba. Yeah. It's like to oh tell my, my dad God, that he's wait. okay. That she would say that. 
Well, yeah, that's, 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 yeah, I was like, what is that? Yeah. There's no my way dad, you'd know that we're even Chaldean to say yeah, you Baba. Don't know what like, Baba means what? I have no clue, yeah. right. That's why I was like, yeah. is it Baba? Is it Baba? But it, it was definitely about Baba. Probably just to give a message to my dad. because She's happy. She knows that he's happy. It makes her happy. Her yeah. heart's happy. He, and he, just so you know, like the things that you're doing in your life, you wonder if she agrees with what you're, the choices you're making. She does. She thinks that you're doing the best you can and that you, she's proud of you. Let's tell her I'm sorry. I'll do better. But <laughs> no, I appreciate she's, she's that. She's proud yeah. of you, though. She's so proud of you. I'm proud to be her son. So, she knows you're yeah. a good person, yeah. so that's good. What do you think now? Let's think about that for a second. I mean, as you guys could see, I had a very late reaction to it because it was the last thing I ever expected Janine to know. She mentioned the word Baba, which is widely said by Chaldean moms referring to the dad of the family. Where's Baba? How's Baba? Baba is sleeping. Shut the fuck up before he comes out and whoops your ass. I know it as a Chaldean word, and I don't think in my whole life I have ever heard anybody say Baba. I've only heard Bubba, as in Bubba Gump Shrimp Company, from Forrest Gump. I know that other countries most likely use that word to refer to fathers, but let's just say it was a guess and she was just saying that because other countries use it like, dude, what are the odds? What are the actual odds? She actually had no idea that the word was Baba. At first she said Bubba. She thought it was a nickname for somebody. Now, even if she did research on me, we never put that information out there. Nobody knew that my aunt passed away. Nobody knew Clint's mom passed away. We never talked about it. That's how sensitive it was. We never brought it up. There's just no way for her to have known. And in conclusion, I think that Clint had a real connection with his mom that day. Um, she shared some more stuff with Clint. I'm gonna leave that private, but that stuff was the most real and like just mind blowing to me. And I won't ever forget that moment in my life. Now, story number two is one that I actually really didn't wanna tell. I'm just gonna be honest. I don't hide anything from you guys, but I don't wanna tell the story. I don't, because for the first time in a long time, I feel like I'm being watched by a ghost or I feel like there's a ghost present in my home as we speak. Right now, as I'm speaking, there's a ghost in my home. And let me tell you why. About three weeks ago, something very weird happened to Leslie and I. So every morning, Leslie leaves for work at 5.30 a.m. Now that is a very early time to be going to work, as you guys know. If anybody is waking up at 5.30 a.m., you're either in the military, you're psycho, or you're going to work. So what she heard for like three mornings straight does not make sense. Leslie told me that she hears a noise in the vent above the bathroom every morning when she wakes up. Now that vent is in that room to the right and we have no neighbor there. Even if it could have been the neighbor, that's impossible because there's literally a padlock on that door. No one has been in that house. If somebody was living there, we would have got multiple noise complaints because I'm very loud. She said it sounded like scratching or digging and that spooked me out at first, but then I was like, okay, it's not a human. It could be a rat or a mouse. So I called maintenance and I said, hey, I want you guys to come over and check my vents. Uh, I think something is in there. They said, oh, okay, well, come on down. Some guy shows up and he opens the vents and he's like looking with his flashlight. He's like, there's no feces or nothing in here that indicates that any animal was in here and there's no scratch marks or nothing like that on the vent. I said, no, I think that my girlfriend wouldn't lie to me. I think there might be something in the vent. He said, well, not to say you're wrong, but it is impossible for an animal to be in the vents the way that we have our ventilation system set up. It is absolutely impossible. Guys, I'm editing that part of the video. And now I hear things in the vent and it just stopped. I hope the camera picked it up. Everybody just listen. Guys, look at my headphones right here on the table. And just in case you guys think it's coming from like outside, you can't hear it at all. You can't hear it at all. But once you go inside, 
And guys, I just heard this now, and I'm gonna show you guys what my computer is on because I'm editing this video as we speak, okay? Not to say you're wrong, but it is impossible for an animal to be in the vents the way that we have our ventilation system. Okay, that's literally, I am on this part right now. I, I am just now putting music on it. And the noise just started in the vent and I can hear it for the first time. Okay, that's weird. I haven't heard that until I started editing this video. And why is this dude sitting like that? And then it stops. Like they got tired? Okay, I'm gonna ask my neighbor if he hears that noise. So that's pretty weird, but um, now here's the really weird part. The next morning after the maintenance man leaves, I wake up in a pool of sweat. It literally feels like Satan is hugging me. It felt like I was in hell. I woke up, it was so hot, it felt like a sauna or like Las Vegas in the summertime. Mind you, I never in my life turned that heater on, ever. I think I've turned it on maybe once in my whole life. The reason is simple. The reason is because I am fat and I get hot very fast, I sweat. So I always keep the AC at 70 degrees always sometimes 67 when it gets really hot so i got up out of bed and it literally felt like i pissed myself from my head to my toes that's how soaked i was in sweat and i walk outside and i look at the thermostat and it is set to 90 degrees 90 degrees in my house never never no one would ever do that i almost died i'm overweight like i almost died that's how hot it was i didn't even think to record or take a picture i just instantly went i turned it oh my god i turned it to like 40 degrees i opened all the windows i opened my front door and I call Leslie. I'm like, Leslie, did you turn the heater to 90 degrees? She's like, no. She had no clue what I was talking about. And then when I hung up, I realized it makes sense. Leslie doesn't even know how to work the heater. She only knows how to work the AC. She hasn't, she'd never turned the heater on in here before. I didn't turn it on. Leslie didn't turn it on. Who would do that? Who would want to make a house 90 degrees? Was it too cold in this house for you, evil demon? Do you want me to move out so you could live here by yourself? So that was hella weird, but don't worry guys, there's something much, 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 much worse. And it's coming up later in the video. For now, let's continue. So story number three is actually a little more unsettling than just a ghost story. Um, I'm not sure if you guys have seen this video right here. Long story short, I made Leslie a fake Tinder profile, pretended to be Leslie, and then told the person that I was talking to, hey, my boyfriend found out that we were talking. I, I can't have this account anymore. And I just wanted to see who would try to keep the relationship going a scummy cheater. I got the man on a face call and practically humiliated him for 20 minutes straight. After he realized that I played him, he decided to threaten me, which I expected. What I didn't expect was for him to actually catch me in public. When I do videos like these, I know the risks, but at the same time, I'm a jackass. So this man ended up finding my YouTube channel mainly because I told him the name when I was trolling him. And he also decided to leave death threats on my YouTube channel and some other bad stuff, which we decided to block him from the channel because we just can't have that stuff in my comment section. So don't let me catch you in public. I know where you live, blah, blah, blah. And then he mentioned the exact town that I live in. Done deal. Never thought I'd ever run into the guy. Hilarious, but also dangerous. So anyways, a couple months later, I stopped to get some gas. Now, as I'm pumping my gas, minding my own business, I see somebody literally staring at me from a few pumps over. It wasn't the guy, but this man is just staring at me. And I kind of like glanced at him. My immediate thought was this man's a supporter. Maybe he wants a picture. Maybe he just wants to say, what's up? Cool, let's do it. He goes to the passenger side of the car and it looks like he's talking to somebody. Then he looks back up, he points at me, then he looks back down. Still, I'm thinking it's just some supporters. Not alarming at all yet. But then a man pops out of the car and we lock eyes and I immediately recognize the man. Now, thank God I don't trust gas stations and I always got that Pacific Cooler Caprice on me, if you know what I mean. If you haven't realized by now, it's the man from the Tinder video. Now, I waited to see what the man was gonna do. Still pumping my gas, not making any sudden movements, just looking at this guy. He starts emptying his pockets into the car. And now I immediately know this gas station is about to be on the news. So he starts walking up to me and he's smiling. I'm still pumping my gas, but I have my guard up now. I'm looking at his hands, I'm looking at his pockets. And he looks up and says, 
hey bro and all i did was say this is exactly what i said i said hey, what's up that's really all i said i laughed and i said what's up then i had to make a move fast i started thinking if this man was gonna do anything wouldn't his friend from the car be walking over to back him up to make sure he doesn't get you know hurt or whatever or why would his friend just be pumping gas so i look over at his friend and his friend is just smiling and he goes like that and i'm like dude something weird's going on man but at the same time it's like this doesn't make sense i still had my guard up back to reality i created an imaginary line in my head and told myself if he crossed that line bad news fortunately he stops a little bit away he says hey bro i'm that guy from your youtube video i said oh word what's up he said i know this is weird bro and he just kept saying like i know this is weird like i understand this is weird like he was saying that like three four times until i was like in my head like i, I started looking around like is someone sneaking me or something like what is going on he said i just want to let you know man that's not the kind of guy i am and i have no beef with you and i wanted to apologize for what happened he's like me and my homies watched the video like we we're laughing about it it's not even that serious and i didn't even know what to say i was just like all right appreciate it and then he comes up to shake my hand and i'm like yo bro respectfully just stay over there i still don't know what's happening i don't trust this guy like i just humiliated this guy why would he come up and apologize and they said bro i promise you like it's all good i'm not i'm not trying to do anything i promise you everything's straight and then he yells out at his friend and it wasn't the guy that was pumping the gas it was another guy in the car another guy comes out of the car and he says what's up sherman and i look at him and i realize it's my friend from high school i went up to the car i said what's up to everybody i shook the guy's hand and I was like, look, beef is done. It was funny. It's over. That's all done. That's all done with. When I tell you guys I left that gas station and called Leslie so fast to tell her what happened, it was just insane. Like anything could have happened that day. I could not be here right now. But it just goes to show you anything could happen in the heat of the moment, but you never really know someone until you know them. Let's move on to the next story. So story number four, we're moving back to ghosts or serial killers, whatever you want to call this story. Most of you know that I just did a series about a man that lived in the woods who ate people, like uh, ate a child and was a murderer. And it's just a crazy story. If you haven't seen it, um, go watch it, it's the man in the woods. And there was about four houses in this area that could have housed the man named Festus. Now I got all this information from a fan that sent an email and he told me which house had the highest probability that he lived in. And so we booked that house to stay the weekend in and we just wanted to see if we could catch anything. Now, when we got to the house, we realized some things didn't add up. For example, the story states that Festus lived under the floorboards in the kitchen, first floor, but in the house we were staying in, the kitchen was upstairs, and that would be kind of impossible for somebody be, to be living under the upstairs floor. That would just mean you're living on the first floor. So we realized he might not have lived here. We started discovering our other options. I looked back at the email that I got from the person that rented me the house and realized something very strange. The email stated to not go near the house next door, strictly off limits. Do not go near it. I got curious. As I was walking to the car to grab Leslie's charger, I saw one of the neighbors taking some stuff out of his car as well and I asked him, hey, can I ask you a quick question? He said, yeah, of course. I said, do you happen to know if anybody lives in this house? And I pointed at the house that they said not to go near. And the man said, nope, nobody's been living there. I've been living here for four years. Nobody's ever lived there. And he said he was pretty sure the bank was about to claim it. Now, I didn't mention this in my video because eventually it didn't lead to anything. In my video, I went to that house I walked up the patio. I tried to open the door. It was very spooky. I saw some cameras, some weird footprints, but it didn't seem like anybody ever lived there. The driveway was completely snowed over. The only thing that signified that somebody could have been living there was the cameras and a blind that had a peak spot, which was really weird. But at the same time, like that's not concrete evidence that somebody is living there. So nothing happened, went back to the cabin empty handed. At least that's what I thought. Now this might get a little confusing, so try to follow along. The first day that Leslie and I were staying in this cabin, I went down to get some bags from the car and the stairs were very icy. Okay, so I ended up falling down a flight of stairs for what felt like 10 minutes straight. And I got up and looked at the door to see if Leslie was there. And I just so happened to see a ring doorbell camera that caught the entire thing. But as I was walking back up the stairs, I looked into the ring camera and I said, hey, if anybody saw that, please send me the footage. I'm not going to sue. I just really wanted the video. I just thought it was hilarious. So I asked for the video. Now, why would this be important? Well, 
a couple weeks later, I got a phone call from the owner of the house that I was renting. He says, hey man, I saw the ring footage and I heard you mention suing. And I just started laughing and I said, hey, I have no intention on suing. I just thought it was really funny the way I fell. And I just wanted to see the footage of it. Like, I just think that's funny. I want to show my parents and that's funny. He said, hey, for legal reasons, I cannot give you the footage. Um, if you really want it, you'll have to get a lawyer. We'll have to go through paperwork and blah, blah, blah. I said, okay, bro, it's not that serious. As I'm about to hang up, this guy says, hey, by the way, did you go anywhere near the house next door? In my head, I was like, he wouldn't have asked that question if he didn't already know. He had to have seen the ring camera or something. They were all over the house. And I told him, yes, I'm a photographer and I just thought the house looked beautiful. I just wanted to take some pictures of it. And he says, sir, I would love to have you back at the house, but in the future, please do not go near that house. And I said, okay, I'm sorry. It won't happen again if I ever decide to go back, but just wondering why is that house so restricted? And he said the guest living there likes his privacy, that's all. I was speechless. The only thing I could think to say was, oh, I thought nobody lived there. And he said, that's wrong. And then he practically hung up in my face. We exchanged a few more words like, all right, sir, have a good one. Then he just hangs up before I even say bye, just hangs up. And then I'm left with my own thoughts. Now, was Festus living there? Probably not. I mean, I'm sure the story's old, who knows if it's even real, but is it weird that no one has seen someone come out of that house in four years? Yes, could someone really be living there? I mean, yeah, most likely. But at the same time, I'm gonna feel awful if it's just some like old man who just actually likes his privacy. I mean, guys, just imagine, this guy probably watched me go up his patio and like record his house. Like that's, that's up. Those are just risks that you have to take when you're creating content for YouTube. And the last thing that you wanna do is invade someone's privacy or make anybody feel uncomfortable, but I'm, I'm pretty sure this man's fine and yeah. So let's move on to the next story. Okay guys, for story number five, now it's probably why you clicked on this video. I have been seeing hundreds of comments for the past three weeks asking me why I'm no longer in Brandon's videos, why me and Brandon hate each other, why we have beef. The simple short answer is, me and Brandon do not have beef, but there's a reason that me and Brandon don't hang out as much. Long story short, I had a friend that I've known for about seven years at the time. I ended up introducing him to the family. Probably about a month later, things started happening, started getting a little too comfortable. Me and him had some confrontations and then it led to something huge. Like he did something super, super and shady to me that ended with a phone call of me saying stay away from me stay away from my family i don't ever want to see you again do not come back i told everybody hey if you guys want to hang out with him just know that i won't be coming around that area most people in my family cut ties some people didn't which i don't have a problem with i mean family's family i fucking love my family it's not between me and brandon i love brandon he's my cousin i just don't like the guy that's why i've been a little distant now for the final story i need you guys to get absolutely extremely comfortable if you ate all of your snacks already or drank your whole drink, go get a refill because this one's weird. So you guys already heard about the encounter that me and Leslie had with the heater and the vent and that was really weird. But something even weirder happened just last week. So I won Leslie this giant teddy bear here. As you guys could see, it is ginormous. I won it for her at a carnival game. Oh, I probably shouldn't be touching it there since it might be alive, but here it is. Um, for anybody wondering what it looks like. This teddy bear has been sitting on top of a mini fridge in our living room ever since we got it. What I'm saying is nobody has ever touched this teddy bear. But one night I was playing video games late. It was around 2 a.m. and I woke up to use the restroom. When I came out of the restroom, Leslie wasn't in the room and I saw that she had also went to use the restroom across the house. So I went out and I grabbed the teddy bear and I put it in the bed right where I sleep under the covers. I thought it would be a funny joke. And um, when Leslie came back, she found it. She thought it was cute. She laughed, she went to sleep. Everything was normal. Now, when I went to bed, I took it, put it on the floor, went to sleep. I woke up, teddy bear was back on the mini fridge. And obviously I'm not going to call Leslie and say, hey, did you put it back on the mini fridge? Because our lives are more interesting than who picked up the teddy bear. But a couple days later, I woke up and Leslie thought it would be a good idea to take the teddy bear and put it in her spot where she sleeps. And I woke up and I laughed and I took a picture of me and the teddy bear laying in bed. I sent it to Leslie and she said, hello, you guys are so cute, very normal encounter. And then luckily I said, that's cute, but don't ever do that again unless you want me to wake up and have a heart attack. Then she said, do what? And then I said, F no. I called Leslie so fast. I asked her, did you put this little bitch asked Teddy right next to me. She said no, and she was kind of laughing, but I can tell in the tone of her voice that she was telling the truth. I knew she didn't put it there. Leslie, did you put it there? No. 
Tell me because this is going too far. No, like it's I going in secrets. You, are you sure? I swear. It is going in the secrets video. I swear. Okay. There. All right. Anyways, I put the teddy bear back on the mini fridge and I just stared at it as I was eating my breakfast. I started telling myself, I'm a sleepwalker. Maybe I took it and I put it next to me on the bed. I kept texting Leslie, are you sure? Are you sure? She said, no, I did not put it there. And I just came to the conclusion that maybe I was sleepwalking and I, for whatever reason, took a teddy bear and put it next to me on the bed for whatever reason. Okay, let's just say I was sleepwalking, right? But hold on. The next day, three o'clock a.m., Leslie and I are sleeping and we wake up to a loud bang. It literally sounded like a gunshot in the apartment. My one mil plaque had fallen off the wall. That thing is about 10 pounds, so you know it was loud, but it's explainable. Things fall off the walls. Paintings fall off the walls, especially if you're using sticky tape like my dumbass did. It's what happened five seconds after that freaked us the hell out. We hear another loud bang from the living room. Okay, just hold on, just hold on, please. My heart is racing. Like I think I'm about to have a heart attack. And I walk out of the room and I look around. I see nothing. Leslie then walks out. And since she cleans the house, she notices that an Amazon box that was on the table for like three days straight had fallen off the table and onto the floor. It was full of a bunch of heavy tools that I was using for my game room. It was not on the edge at all. It was on the table securely. It was in the middle of the table. We look around and I notice Mr. Teddy f over here is no longer on the mini fridge. He's on the floor. Now that could, all that could be a coincidence. Maybe, just maybe there was an earthquake, okay? Maybe there was a freaking earthquake. That makes sense. That makes sense. So I called my mom. I said, mom, was there an earthquake? She said, I don't know, I was sleeping. Keep in mind, it's like 3 a.m. at this time. I called my two sisters. They said the same thing, followed by a you, it's 3 a.m., hangs up in my face. Then I go on Twitter and I see if there was an earthquake in my area. I go on Google, I look all over and no earthquake. And then I look at the one mil plaque. And as you could see, this is um, where the, the tape was, okay? So th this is where it was. And then it was also up here, which ripped off. But then you see this right here. Now, what in God's name could have ripped this off the wall like that? How on earth would this have ripped? I mean, maybe, dude, my one mil plaque is ruined. Maybe there's an explanation. Maybe I'm just a jackass. But this thing f had to have flown off the wall. Like this, this didn't just fall off. It had to have been pulled off the wall. Not saying it was, I'm just saying, I think it might have been pulled off the wall. Now, the next morning, I scheduled a surveillance company to come in and hook up security cameras all in my house because there will not be something happening in this house that we won't know about or won't see on video. So in the future, when something happens, because I'm sure something is going to happen, it's going to be on camera. All this that I told you right now, I have no proof of it. You could choose to not believe me and I wouldn't blame you if you didn't, okay? I would not believe it if somebody told me. But the fact that it happened to me, I know it's real and I am going to get evidence. You guys know how I am. I will not sleep until I do get evidence. Even if it means doing the Ouija board. No. Okay. <laughs> so much Leslie's mad. Leslie's mad about the cameras because she said that it's giving too much attention, but I don't care. I'm very sorry, Leslie. This is our career here. We're talking about our channel here. Yes, I did say our channel because Leslie is pregnant, everybody. No, I'm just kidding. People have been asking me why I haven't been showing Leslie in my videos and is she pregnant? The answer is, should we tell them? No, the answer is no. Leslie's not freaking pregnant. I just, I haven't been vibing it with her lately, so I haven't been putting her out to play it. No, we're practically married. Like, trust me, you will never not see Leslie. I, I can assure you guys, Leslie is going to be on my channel for the rest of my life. Anyways, guys, if you did enjoy this video, please drop a thumbs up. It actually really does help me out. Let's just try, for whatever reason, let's just see if we can hit 100,000 likes. I, I doubt that I could, but let's just see if I could. So if you watched till this point in the video, please hit that like button. Let's see if I can hit 100,000 likes. Also, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications so you can always get notified when I upload a video, which I don't know why people say that. It's pretty freaking obvious. If you guys did enjoy this, please drop a thumbs up. It's been your boy, Sherman. Leslie, my one mil plaque, Mr. Teddy. And we're out. Peace. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Teddy. I'm so, please, please.